Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so welcome to another medicine under my horse medicine leadership um, videos. I uh, Just to give a little bit of background to people that are um, new to me, I am an equine guided mentor and facilitator, and I have been for 10 years. Um, I created Horse Medicine Leadership Academy um, probably, when was that? four years ago. And um, I have been training and mentoring and kind of guiding um, those that are stepping into the field of equine guided coaching or equine facilitated learning, um, and then already mentoring people that are already in the field um, since that time. And part of what I wanted to do in this video series is to be able to share, you know, some of the pieces that I often will go through when I'm teaching um, people in the Horse Medicine Leadership Academy um, to sort of support those that are already, you know, in the field doing the work or that are thinking about, you know, stepping into it. Um, currently, uh, what our kind of my practice looks like is I run an 80 acre retreat center. I have a herd of 28 horses. So I also do a bit of a private horse rescue. Um, my space allows me to support the horses. I do um, retreats and trainings, um, both with leadership development and coaching. And then I also integrate um, the horses into my online coaching packages. So that's kind of where that comes from. So today I was inspired to do a video talking a little bit more of facilitation skills of something that I call um, awareness of where we hold an agenda. And I was just come off a call today with um, some of the women that are in my current cohort in the Horse Medicine Leadership Academy of speaking of being aware of the agenda that we bring into the space, just taking my sweater off because it's a bit hot, um, when we're with our horses. And so one of the things that I think is unique about my program is along with the competency skills, um, I'm also helping people really, I think, to deepen and develop how we hold uh, a space of integrity between our horses and our clients that go beyond just a activity and an exercise. So I tend to look at wanting to kind of create a confidence that it's not about an activity or a script or an exercise we're going through, but how do we bring a, a certain competency and a strength and a skill set um, to have really powerful experiences for our clients. And I think one of those things is being aware of something um, of what our agenda is when we go in with our clients. And this is something that I think this sort of teaching has been really impactful for me. Um, and I think it's something that I notice with my clients. And again, I just got off a call talking about it. So I wanted to deepen into it. So naturally, first of all, when we have a client that comes to see us with our horses, we naturally have an agenda for them. And um, we should, you know, because we want to sort of be able to, I care a lot, you know, if somebody's going to invest money in coming into working with me, um, I, I want to ensure that they're going to walk away with something that's going to be impactful. So there is an, an agenda. Now, I remember when I first got out of training and I was sort of new to this space, I had this fear, or this expectation that a certain magical thing had to happen every time my client stepped out with the herd. So I was sort of holding an agenda of what I thought that needed to look like and needed to happen. And both with how my horses showed up and my clients. And so what that drove was a little bit of an anxiety for me of wanting to conjure up an experience because I had an attachment and agenda to what I thought it needed to look like in order for that client to walk away and be like, Oh my God, I just had the most amazing experience of my life. And what happened with that is I would often then impose that expectation on my client. Um, something that I've learned doing this work for 10 years is that, and I'll, I'll say this now to my clients is I don't know what's going to happen. And sometimes it can be, um, you know, because a lot of my work is at liberty of just taking people out into the space with the horses. Sometimes the experience is there's an amazing connection that happens with a person and one of my horses and it's incredible. And sometimes the, the space is just us observing the herd and learning from the mirroring of the herd is presenting to us. So it looks differently for every person. And so I can't really have a certain agenda of what I think it needs to look like um, for my client because I simply do not know. And, and we don't know what that experience needs to be for them. Um, and it really isn't for us to impose that or to worry about 
being able to deliver that. And I think one of the things that I believe is so important about being a facilitator of the space is to know um, when we are doing something in service of our clients and when we are doing something in service of ourselves. Um, and, and I speak from this from somebody that I've been through this and this is still something I have to watch. Um, but naturally, again, I'm going to have a bit of an agenda when my client comes in. What I don't want to lead with is being able to facilitate based on the experiencing meeting my agenda so that I can feel validated that when the client leaves, I feel really good about myself, that I did an amazing job, this person took something away, so I can feel good about that because it's not really about me feeling a certain way. Um, that, doesn't need, that doesn't factor into it at all. Um, I've had experiences I will share with you where I can remember, especially my work with men actually, because they process very differently with women, where I've walked away from a session being like, holy shit, I totally sucked. And I don't think that person walked away with anything. And I'm processing that and feeling like, oh my God, I really screwed that up, all of that. So I'm in what we call um, one of another kind of skill sets that I teach is levels of listening. I'm in my level one of making it all about me. And um, lo and behold, and I've had this happen a few times with my um, male clients, I'll get an email being like, oh my God, that, se that session changed my life. And a year later, I'm still implementing this, or I still think about this session years later. Um, and they took away what they took away for them. And it maybe wasn't what I thought, or that made me feel good about it, but it was perfect for them. And so one of the things when I'm going into a session, what I really want to be conscious of, and this is what I had shared about in my um, call, my training call today, was that I'm not, I'm being aware of that agenda and I'm not letting that agenda lead me. And so part of the self-management that we have to have as a facilitator is really be conscious of that insecurity that often will drive, um, you know, how we show up in, in a session and um, how that manifests. And, and, I, and I'll, I'll share kind of an example of that. Um, one of the women who's in my training program did a practice session and one of the feedbacks I gave her is um, because there was a little bit of jumping in a bit too early because really wanting the client to get something, you know, and again, that's part of the validation of us feeling good that, oh my God, the client got something. They had this aha moment. And one of the things that I coached her around as a facilitator is you have to trust the exchange of what's happening between that horse and that person. And um not feel like you have to get in there or don't get in there and, and affirm that so that you can feel good about yourself, right? So we really want to take a step back and realize that is my urge to step in and give that person guidance or offer feedback coming from that I feel like that needs to happen or I'm feeling insecure and I need to be validated that something is happening here. And so one of the, the skills that I will teach and, and I want to share here is that place of self-management. When we have that urge that we want to get in and maybe deepen an observation or help facilitate something, that we're just checking into where that urge is coming from. Is it coming from because we feel like there's something that that client needs help with in terms of what's happening between the horse and the client? Or are we feeling insecure because we're not seeing something amazing happening and we want to feel good about that we've created a powerful experience for our clients, so we want to get in there. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure that out. And so one of the things that I'd offer to the women today was, if you're not sure, ask the person, the client first, what are you experiencing? And so what that question does is it, it helps inform us, you know, is the client struggling with something that they need help with? Um, or are they getting something that's happening in the exchange between this horse and this, and this, you know, session, and that I can kind of, again, kind of step back and just hold the space for that to occur. So if I'm uncertain or I'm feeling insecure and I'm questioning, you know, am I doing enough or is, is something happening here? Cause nothing looks like it's happening that I just ask that question, what's going on for you? What are you experiencing right now? And so that allows the client to kind of dictate that and that my agenda to be validated or to have something happen isn't driving the line of questioning where then I get in and kind of start to make stuff up because of how I think it needs to go. Um, the same with, I think, you know, because of a lot of my work is at Liberty and the sessions can look so differently. 
Um, I, sometimes what happens if I go out and, and I have people ask me this question too, of like, well, what, what if nothing's happening? And I said, well, nothing's ever, nothing is not happening. Something's happening. Um, but when I see that maybe there's not as much engagement, instead of going into that place of insecurity in myself of like, oh my God, I didn't set the space right. Or I'm, I'm, I'm stuck or I don't know where to go. And, and again, I'm in my level one. I try to open up the curiosity of, first of all, I trust that whatever the client is needing to experience is getting mirrored by my herd. And I need to let go of whatever I think that's supposed to look like. And number two, I'm going to, again, really pay attention to those urges, not my insecurity. And I need to park my insecurity or kind of help manage that. So I'm not influencing the session based on, um, meeting my own agenda or my own need to feel right or um, validated in that. And so there's sort of this constant dialogue that's happening internally when I'm facilitating in the space of where are these urges coming from? I notice the insecurity and now I have to come back to really supporting the client and trusting that whatever's happening in this flow is exactly what they're needing to see. And even if let's say my horses are just standing there grazing, then there's a mirror in that too. And so it, it, it's coming back to that curiosity of asking those questions of how does it resonate for you or what are you experiencing or what are you noticing instead of me trying to fumble around and make something powerful happen that's not authentic to the space. I hope that's sort of making sense in terms of agenda. Um, I definitely know when I've been in a space with a coach um, that has an agenda, it's painful and it's uncomfortable. Um, so I, I don't want to create that experience. And I think the other thing that also supports that is knowing we don't have to work so hard. You know, my job as a facilitator is not to work so hard. It's actually to create the space and intention for the experience to happen. And I will share to kind of end this, you know, short little video with this. I remember um, first getting out of my training and this was I think in about 2010 and every time I would lead a workshop you know I would have this anxiety of like oh god I hope something really magical happens because people are paying and they're coming and like holy shit and I went out to see my horses and I my one horse in particular Shaveo who's our comedian of our herd and um, I kind of said to him you know uh, you know set the intention out okay people coming and I kind of need you guys to do something imposing that like you know you guys need to perform basically because these people are expecting a certain thing to happen and what i felt from him was this thought kind of came through was we don't have to do anything we just have to be and i was like oh god yeah you're right and so that was really impactful for me of where i was imposing that even on my horses that they have to perform um and it has to look a certain way in order for it to be powerful for the client. And so again, my adjustment to help support that is I don't create a lead in of what might happen with people in my herd. Um, so I don't create this expectation of this is what it's going to look like. I essentially say, I don't know what it's going to look like. You know, the horses are going to respond to your energy and basically mirror the experience that you're needing to have today. And I don't really know what that's going to be. And we are not going to know what that's going to be until we get out there. And so I'm not, I'm not setting up an expectation of things to look a certain way. And then it can be organic and authentic, which to me, I think is really important is there, is there's that level of authenticity in the experience. So um, that might have resonated for you of just having that awareness of where you carry agenda. And then how to respond to your agenda, how to hold space for it. And then if you're feeling that insecurity, how do I then check in with the client so I'm not facilitating based on imposing my own agenda in this space? Um, and we'll be better facilitators when we are able to um, have an awareness of agenda. Um, goal is not to be perfect because we're human, but these are some of the things that have helped me when that still comes up in 10 years later, I will say I still struggle with that sometimes because the pressure of somebody's paying me to come out and have an experience, I really feel like I need to deliver on that. So I take, I take that very seriously. Um, I need to watch that because that seriousness of that, I need this to be valuable to somebody can influence where I try to manipulate or dictate the session based on being validated in that um, value for myself. So 
There you go. Um, questions, comments, please pop it in the comment box of where that really resonated for you. And then if there's sort of questions about that, I'd love to answer them. Um, I run Horse Medicine Leadership Academy, which is an academy that is a dual um, support if you're entering into training in this work, if you're already a facilitator um, and you need some help with the facilitation and business elements, um, there's things on my website. You can check hillaryschneider.com that gives a couple of different offerings and how I support that space. If you are an equine guided facilitator or you want to enter on that path um, and to know we do sort of do training both at the beginner and the advanced level. So if you want to deepen into that with us more, you're welcome to. We also have a mentorship circle for those that are already in the field that want a little bit more support, both in facilitation and business. Um, so you can check that out as well. And I'll add all those links in there. And otherwise, if this was helpful for you today, and that was great, then um, let me know. And uh, if there's something that you want me to kind of deepen into on one of the other videos, let me know as well. And I'm happy to do that. See you guys on the next one.